I'll go on to uh, one uh, case and then push it uh, back to Matt. This was a five-year-old with a second MASD. This is the transthoracic echo. Uh, in almost an apical two short axis picture where the AV valve rim looks okay, the right upper pommy vein, not the best in that projection. And uh, this is what we had uh, for an SVC rim. Again, not the best echo pictures, a lot of floppiness in the septum itself. Um, this sized out in the cath lab uh, to be around 20 millimeters. Now, uh, the one thing for earlier practitioners is, you know, uh, you have to choose if you're going to do stop flow versus, you know, oversizing your balloon, especially uh, in a patient this size. So the, uh, we that measured around 20 millimeters. They went with the 37 millimeter uh, GCA. Uh, you'll see it being deployed both on AP and lateral projection. And once I... Um, have that. I'm going to ask Matt what he thinks of this deployment. So yeah, so very, you know, interesting case, pretty standard patient size, patient age, a 20 millimeter defect in all practicality that if you, if you can jump it up to a 20 to a 37, if you have enough atrial septal length that technically it's going to make this deployment easier to do. Um, so I agree with the choice of a 37 millimeter device here. And as I watch your left-hand panel, you know, you have back retention on the LA disc and you're pushing out the RA device. And it looks to me in the left-hand panel that you're, well, I can't tell. You have to pause it. I can't tell on the right-hand side if you've come through or not. Um, and so it looks to me that maybe you're all in the LA, although I can't tell for sure. Yeah, I think you're right. That initial deployment, I think one of the telling points is how this is, uh, this actually falls off. You see it being reasonable. And I think actually the left atrial disc on, uh, falls off and then, you know, the right and the right uh, left atrial disc are actually not separated at all if you keep watching it here. So that's, I think, a telltale yeah. uh, sign of your deployment not being great. Right. So I think, so, what, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, so I like what I look for there. And again, we're, we're doing this cold. So we didn't practice, guys, which is great. So you're, you're seeing this in real time. Mm -hmm. But what we, what we look for there is you open that LA disc and you draw it back against the atrial septum. And then as you close the RA disc up to it, you want to see separation between those two discs. And, you know, I think that LA, that AP camera in a steep LAO, like with a little bit of cranial is really going to show that nicely. So go ahead, move forward from, uh, from there. Yeah, we'll talk so I, I, I think what happened is, and this is what Matt was talking about. This is what it should look like as it uh, comes back across the septum and cash nice septum secundum itself. Uh, but in this case, I think what uh, happened was as uh, the, it fell off the aortic rim right there. Uh, and then you see both of the discs uh, actually uh, touching each other. So in this particular case, what we tried a couple of times uh, and then uh, rotated our handle to go ahead and capture that. So you see here uh, that the whole disc is being rotated. Uh, the whole delivery system is being rotated as we deploy it and watch this is the plane of the septum. And as we deploy it, you pay attention to that. Um, and you'll see that, you know, fall a little better onto the septum itself. And you'll see that separation between the discs right now here and both, right. um, both projections. Matt, yeah, any and comments on that? No, so I think in your, the, your, left, your left panel here really shows it nicely as you rotate it around. You can see the tuliping of the LA disc as you're pulling back on it. And then the RA disc comes out and you see very clear separation between the two discs there. I just go ahead and lock it. Uh, this is what the T looked like. It, had captured the aortic room really nicely. 
Now, one of the questions for you, Matt, at this point is, do you just go ahead and lock it? Do you do something else uh, before you lock it? Yeah, so that's a really good style point and style question. I'll tell you what I, what I typically do. Um, I've gotten so used to really relying on fluoro for the initial opening and deployment steps of this procedure. So what I do is I open the, I tell, I ask them to take the TE probe kind of out of, out of the field of view and I open it under fluoro and I form the LA disc and the RA disc. And then I give the little push pull. And if I can convince myself that I'm seeing, you know, the LA disc and the RA disc move away from each other, I lock it. So I lock it. And then I say, let's look at it by echo. And the reason that I do that, and again, we'll go through cases is that I've had, I've, when I was early in my experience, I spent a lot of time trying to interrogate the echo while I was still unlocked, but have the device across the septum. And this delivery system by design is kind of stiff and it pulls the atrial septum out of plane, as you know. So it, especially you can see that on the lateral view and when you lock it, you see the reorientation. And so it's a supra physiologic force that you're applying to this device that could be in good position that you might dislodge if you sit there too long with back tension on it. So I've learned that, um, I've learned to sort of trust the fluoro trust, learn how, what this thing looks like as the discs are deflecting away from one another and then lock it and then really interrogate it by echo. Um, so that's kind of how, how I, it's a variation of what you're doing here. Um, looks like you lock it. Matt, do you have any comments on how this uh, device looks on uh, the LAO projection here? Yeah, so that's a really nice demonstration. So this, this, um, Floral image that Shibana has up here. I love, and I would encourage everybody to do this on their patients. So the Onfos view, which is usually like a caudal, a little bit at RAO, and then sort of a, with your lateral camera, just get an LAO, a steep LAO view generally lays it out. And what you can do is if you, if you look from right atrial islet to left atrial islet and go straight across there, and then you draw perpendicular to that, you'll see the plane of the septum. And you can count the number of leaflets on the LA side and on the RA side. And you can see that you're really straddling the atrial septum very well by fluoro. And, and that, those pictures, especially your right-hand panel there, that's what I've sort of come to trust. Like I like, I look for that on fluoro and then, you know, before I, and then before I, you know, I lock it. And then before I take the retrieval cord out, then I do the interrogation because with just the, when it's just the retrieval cord attached to the device, it will take this, this uh, confirmation in the septum. And this is what you want to see with your echo. Yeah. So I think one of the differences between this and the GSO is the reliance on fluoroscopy for this uh, device deployment and the placement versus, you know, the GSO. I'm not sure I relied as much on fluoroscopy uh, to be happy if, you know, if that was more an echo evaluation. So that is definitely a change uh, in terms of that. Uh, this is how the device finally looked on uh, transthoracic echocardiogram uh, the next day. So pretty nice. Uh, a little bulkier on some of the views, but again, you have to uh, remember how they catch the septum on echo and the device on echo is going to be very different. So some of your echo people might not be comfortable uh, with how this device sits and looks. It's uh, sometimes not as visible as uh, uh, the other uh, competitive devices. So uh, something for them to get used to uh, if they have not had this before.